I'd just come back hitchhiking from Italy, sat on a bed in my parents' home wondering what the hell I was going to do with myself, and saw in this brochure that I could um, do an MA in comparative literature with a little bit of uh, creative writing thrown in. And within two minutes, I was talking to Malcolm Bradbury. I showed him a story or two I'd written, and he said, well, okay, come. I arrived, uh, I guess, sort of early September, 1970. Took a room on the New Market Road in a very nice big house. I remember clearly thinking that I would not leave this room until I'd written a short story. The very next morning, uh, I typed out the story I'd written, about five or 6,000 words. It was called Conversation with a Cupboard Man. It turned out to be my first published story. And then I began a, a very interesting year. I remember Malcolm explained how the course would run, that we would have weekly seminars throughout the first two terms. He said, you'll be reading two writers in advance and then coming together in the workshop to discuss them. And when he said writers, I thought he meant, you know, Virginia Woolf or James Joyce or Dickens or whatever. And he then went on to say, so that'll mean you have to photocopy your work in advance and submit it to the office so that we can all read it. I realized by writers, he meant us and he meant me. And that was the first time that anyone had ever referred to me as a writer, uh, which was something that I wanted to be uh, more than I wanted life itself, really. I was on the bus on my way to work and I read an article by Louise Doughty who had been on the UEA course a while back. She was writing about her experience and then I got into the office and I thought, I gotta get out of here. I know, I'm gonna apply on that for that course that I just read about. And that was how it kind of changed my life. I started writing my first novel, The Virgin Blue, during the course. I was delighted that I had what I called a, an idea big enough for a novel. And it was really hard, and it's still hard. It's still hard writing every day, but I love it, and I got used to it over that year. And I think that was the push that I needed to take myself seriously in the down the writing path. It's very hard for me to think of, of other places where literature is consumed in such an enthusiastic, compassionate, and engaged manner. I'd started writing my debut novel, The Harmony Silk Factory, while working full time. And I got a place at UEA. All of a sudden, I was in this environment where I was surrounded by other people who were in the same position as me. Other people who also thought of themselves as writers and for whom writing was everything. When one begins to write, at least for me in particular, I wasn't thinking of a system, I wasn't really thinking of an industry. I was thinking of the stories and the characters and their voices. And it's a really magical place to be, but you don't know it at the time. By the time I arrived at UEA, I had been working on Stay With Me for at least two to three years. I carried it with me across the oceans to complete it. And by the time it got published, it felt surreal. Um, it still does. It was really great to have that kind of opportunity to interact with different writers one-on-one. -on -one. For me as a writer, it was very inspiring. A year is, sounds like a long time, but it's quite a compressed period of time. So in a way that year felt almost like a fever dream, you know, it happens really, really fast. So it's almost like I can see just sort of pictures. They're little things like, First UEA Live was the first time we got to hear each other read, sitting at the top of the Saganas and looking down on the market, talking about a workshop or talking about anything but workshop. It really is the place where I sort of became a poet. You know, that, that's where I discovered I could write. It's a place where I felt encouraged, a place where I also felt that I was kind of most free. Our first workshop, I drew the short straw and I was up first. <laughs> and I had just written this short story. That short story turned into what I worked on for the most of my MA. We turned it into a novel. I think the novel will survive any number of transformations. It's a format that people like and enjoy and it has a space in our world and I think it is still a playground to discuss all kinds of ideas. I'm gonna quote Bachelard who says that poetry is one of the destinies of speech. Um, and I think that because we are free and we have our imaginations, 
there is always going to be poetry. Our emotional engagement with literature, with fiction in particular, is going to change very much. And I say this because the intersection between technology and writing is such that we will find ways to reach wider and wider audiences. It's always been the aim of literature to capture the way we live and disseminate that. We have yet to invent a better measure of human consciousness and whatever machines we have in the future, we will still have to record and devise entertainments around and fantasize about our relationship to you know, the world, this moment, being in this city, being in the conditions of modernity that we find ourselves. In the future, I want to see not just diversity on the bookshelf, but diversity in the boardrooms where many decisions about what gets published are made. We know the pattern of books and we cling to it, but that doesn't necessarily have to be how it always is. We have this idea that people only want to read what they know. They only want to read about characters that look like them, or they only want to read about characters from places that they're from. And I don't think that's been true. I'm going to put my neck out and say that I hope that there will just simply be more voices, more voices, more great stories, um, more ways of imagining better futures.